Welcome to Mariposa Woolen Mill Needle Felting Kit Instruction. Felting is causing the fibers to intermingle and mat together, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. Wet felting is one way, which is hot water, a bit of soap, and a lot of friction. And the other way is needle felting, which I'm going to demonstrate to you. The needles that you use for felting have ridges that encourage the fibers to grab onto the other fibers and the more that you poke it the more that it felts. It's always best to use a surface like a foam or a rice pad to protect the needle because it's fragile and it's also very sharp. Everything you need is included in the kit so let's get started. Spring in the country begins like this. We'll build up the sky and then work in the background and then we'll layer on top with details. First, we'll use just a little bit of light blue. And more when we're applying these colors, I'm just going to apply them in a very wispy, airy application. And at this point, we could decide the horizon line. Actually, a little bit of purple. Very thin. Just adding interest to the sky and we will felt it down once we've placed colors from our palette here. Or we could use a bit more purple. Bit of the fuchsia. Let's anchor this down and then we'll add white on top just to soften it. So just give it a little press and then we'll begin just gently anchoring it down. You don't want to felt it too much at this point, but if you do see where the fibers are collecting, you can use your needle and spread them out. unless you want them to collect in a certain pattern. But if you want them to kind of blend together, then just use your needle and spread them out. 
and just continue to felt that down by gently anchoring all of the fibers. You don't have to felt it all the way down. Just want to give it a uh, placement. Just kind of spreading the fibers out. And when we do add the white on top, it will soften it a bit more. Just adding a bit more color once you've added the white add back the light blue a little bit of the fuchsia and more of the yellow and we'll just anchor that down elements we'll just work down the mat we'll put in the field the, I guess it's supposed to seem like a, a lavender field or a wildflower field you can add the different colors you have I'm just gonna stick with the blues and the purples because it complements the sky so we'll just stay with that so starting with gonna brighten up the base using the bright blue just pinch off a bit we're going to use the bright blue purple and the light blue So adding, firstly, the purple. You can add it uh, pretty thick, just uh, so when we add the other colors, it will have a nice rich undertone of purple. Still gonna pinch off and apply it, but a bit thicker than what we did in, for the sky. Let's go all the way across. And I'm good, the plan is to put the path on this lower third So now moving to the blue, the brighter blue, just adding it very thin on top.
Okay, so the, the light blue will be our more detail forefront kind of colors, color. So let's just go ahead and anchor this down. green grass beyond the fields, but we're just gonna establish this top of the field by putting this bright blue, or light blue, rather. And as we're applying it, just kind of uh, give it a pull so it kind of has a tapered look to it. Just kind of pulling the fibers away from each other, so you're poking and pulling at the same time. So it just kind of thins out your line. Now we're just going to create some of the flowers up front. So let them create just like a small ball and then stretch out the fiber. Almost the idea of maybe lavender, something like that. I'm gonna add more blue toward the bottom here but we're just gonna put these concentrated blocks of color. So I'm just using very small bits. I'm just gonna spread out so it kind of has a, a, a hue of that light color. And just make sure you spread out your fibers so it kind of joins with your the lengthy uh, application of the fibers. So I'm gonna kind of spread it out. So it just fills in those little gaps. And the good thing about this 
at this stage, if you don't like what you're seeing, you don't like how much, how the fibers responding to the needle, you could just pull up, pull it up and start again. So within the field, I'm gonna give it a little bit of some highlights. Some longer strands of, of color of this light blue. So it kind of gives a, a hint that it's, the flowers have got a little bit of the sunlight little highlights. Okay, in addition to adding that blue, we're going to add a dark green at the bottom of our flowers, bottom of our field. I'm just going to take a small bit, roll it in our fingers to make it a little bit more manageable, and we're going to line this bottom part. Going in and out a little bit, changing the shape we don't necessarily need a straight line. So I made it larger and thinner, so thick and thin there. And this is also what we're gonna use to line our path. But let's just add a little bit of the green inside the field as well. Let's add our path using the light brown. We use the light brown and a little bit of the gray. You can just unroll the roving. It's okay that it's that thick. We just have, you can, so you can be sure of the shape of your path. So it's going to widen a bit at the end closer to you. You can also put grass in it. Or darker brown if you wanted. We are gonna use the dark brown for our fence, so don't use it up on your path. Okay, so let's just anchor that down. fence and then we'll add the foliage in front of the fence last. Okay, so to add our barn, 
Take a bit of red. It will help with creating the barn just to give a little bit of black outline to establish the roof. It uh, makes it difficult for the eye to imagine things. So if we have our roof, then we can plan in our red.
I can just add just a little tiny, tiny bit of blue to the top, maybe a tiny bit of gray just to the roof. Um, maybe even just a tiny smidge of the pink. So it just kind of looks like things are reflecting off of the roof. But if you don't like how it looks, then see that's it's just a little bit too heavy, so I'm not happy with that. So you add the detail you would like. Let's add in our green or our ground to so those hills and a tree or so behind. So just let it run right up under your barn. I create some little trees over here too on the horizon. Give some interest to that line. It will need a bit of the dark green as well. to create a tree. You have brown. You could do that. Just use some of that dark green to give some depth to that line there. So when you're wanting the line to taper, like we did earlier, just taking a bit and give it a pull. And poke as you go, and you're catching more fibers at the beginning than when you're stretching it, it's less fibers. So it's going to taper out. I'm gonna put a little bit of Dark green back here, and a tree. Okay, so you create it to see, however you would like for your scene to appear, adding as many details as you'd like. So like adding the, the windmill, take a small piece, stretch it. So then you have a more manageable piece in your hand. So then you can anchor one end down, anchor it down. So I'm gonna give it a little pull so I can have a straight line semi-straight and whatever see all this extra here if I just pull it it may pull up all of what I've just done so you hold it down and you pull it away all these little loose fibers you can go back back the other direction so you start again
So create your little blades back and forth. So it creates that circle. You could even put a circle. I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> Don't like the sample of that, but you can add the detail like you want. Just adding small fibers. Let's see if our luck with making a circle would be better. So do you see how I worked on this one area more than I worked on the other parts? So you need to re-poke these areas so that it has the same level of being felted. And you see that there's lots of little dots and those can go away if you poke more shallow once you've got everything established, your design, your elements are in, you can go back in and poke very shallow and more frequent, and the, the larger holes will disappear. Okay, so moving on to our greenery here. Just use the dark green first. Then we'll add some nice highlight of the brighter green. I like to work in it, work with the, the roving when I'm working with foliage. I like to work with it in a smaller piece. And I like to anchor it at maybe the top of the blade of the grass or the leaf and then I pull I give a little tug and I and I direct the shape of it so then when I have extra like this I will just go back up and create an opposite direction, blade, whatever um, you want to call it. If you'd like to put some flowers over there, feel free to do that. We'll just add a little bit of bright green along the top of these. Little highlights. And we'll, you can spread out the fibers so that it has more of the 
a brighter tone and then a mixture of the dark and the light. So you have a more medium tone. And if it's too heavy, like you can just hold it down and pull it away. Some of the larger ones, uh, larger leaves out of the green, the bright green closer to us. So now we're going to move on to our fence. So let's start with the fence. We're using the dark brown. Just divide your roving. You can divide it more than once if you'd like. This makes it more post-like. So we will decide where the fence will begin at the ground and how large it will be. This is how tall our largest post will be. don't want to pull up what we've done. So the second post will be slightly shorter. It will be uh, more narrow once it comes down to when we're adding the details. We have to thicken up our first post. But right now we're just establishing the placement. So just a little bit of perspective. There's a slight angle there. Pull it away. This will be straight. This post also has a slight angle. Okay. Some people would just like to stop there. If you want to know how to build it where these two posts are holding these three, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you. Using a bit of black, we're gonna create some shadow. So this post, this end right here, is in front of this. So what we'll have is 
what a bit of shadow. Now granted, we may need to add more brown. Just for demonstration, I'm trying to show you uh, how to achieve things in the foreground. I did forget to show you these little cross beams. circle on the end. This one well as well. Probably looks a bit confusing. I apologize. So adding a bit of highlight with the orange, the amber color across this beam at the top. small bit of black around this beam.
shape. So this post is behind this larger post. So we're just going to give a bit of shadow again. Probably could just go all the way down. So there's a um, I'm sorry. There's another little cross post I forgot to include. So just go down as far as that that post right there. Let's put a bit of dark on on the outside. Okay, so this center here needs a little bit of light color on the end and then we'll add the highlight across its back using that the brighter orange the amber color beam that I did not include earlier. And then we add the black.
All right, so the rest of it you can, it's gonna be hidden behind your plants. So just giving some darkness down at the bottom. The rest of it will be covered. And if you find that your picture is a little bit fuzzy and you have felted it down as much as you want to, you can always just give it a little bit of a haircut as you can turn it sideways and just kind of give it a, a nice little haircut there. Okay, so let's add in our, our greenery and flowers up front. So let's just add quite a bit of that darker green and we'll just build our flowers on it. We'll build the leaves and then put the flowers. So if you want to anchor it down, so I've kind of put a tuft. So if you want to force some of them to be together and create a leaf going different directions. taking small bits and just trying to imagine it as a, a leaf so it has a tapered edge some of them to be stems, just make them skinnier. Okay. So what I did was make some salvia, just a cone-like flower. Starting at its base, where it's thickest, and then just making the fiber stand up, pulling it up.
Just adding a little, those little yellow flowers. You can add them really quickly. Just take a tuft of wool, poke in the center of it, kind of wrap it up inside of the needle and just anchor it down. Then you've got a little round flower. And you can add a center to it, which would be cute. You can use the dark brown or the amber color would be nice as well. So this is your painting and you can add as much cuteness as you'd like. Just be creative and it will be beautiful. So to anchor it down more, all the little pieces that are not fully felted, you need to just go through and Poke some more. Takes quite a bit of poking for it to be completely felted. But this is our completed project. Thanks for joining me today. Hope this video was helpful. So to replenish your felting supplies, just visit us at